Chris Hipkins. Mr Chairman, and I'm very pleased that the Minister is in a mood to answer questions because I've got one that's very important and that is will there be full transparency around all of these dealings and around the, uh, how much uh, the land is sold for, how much the houses are sold for uh, and what does the Crown get in return for those because there hasn't been thus far to date and I'll use an illustrative example. The whole community of Pomari under this uh, clause uh, which was largely owned by Housing New Zealand, the Minister could under this clause uh, remove it from the corporation and basically say that, they, that, he, that he is going to take control of the entire redevelopment in Pormari and making the decisions around that. Uh, now, we've, of course, that would have been if, if, he'd been if this had been in place when that happened. That, that development has already happened. Uh, around about 130 to 140 houses, I think, were either demolished or transferred to the ownership of a private developer there. What we haven't got is the transparency around all of that. So we don't know how much they paid, and um, we don't know the value of what we're getting back. Uh, as, as, when I say we, I'm talking about the taxpayer, the Crown, the government. So they transferred all of these assets uh, into the uh, ownership of uh, a, a private company, a private developer, uh, and around about 130, 140 houses in total. Uh, around 100 of those were demolished and that land completely redeveloped and new houses built on that. My understanding is that thus far housing New Zealand have got back somewhere in the vicinity of a dozen houses, it may be more than that. Now, just do the basic maths, we're talking about tens of millions of dollars probably if you added all of the rateable values of the land and the housing that was transferred, uh, were transferred to the developer. Uh, and I don't see thus far that, that the, the Crown has received, if it's simply a swap, I don't see th that they have received a corresponding value in what they have got back. So the question is, is this a, an asset sale or is it an asset giveaway? And the only way the taxpayers will be able to judge that and be able to judge whether the ministers are responsibly using the powers that they are taking with, this, uh, with the clauses afforded to them in part one will be if there is full transparency around those dealings. Because if they simply decline to release that information on the basis that it is commercially sensitive, which has so often been the case when it comes to these sorts of deals, then the taxpayer will never be in a position to judge whether, in fact, the ministers have used the power that they are giving to themselves. And let's be clear, it's no longer the corporation who are going to be doing these deals. Corporation covered by a whole host of other responsibilities in terms of their financial reporting and so on. Uh, it is going to be the ministers uh, executing these deals. And will there be full transparency? And I hope that the minister will answer that. Uh, because, uh, because under this uh, clause, clause one, they're going to be able to designate a whole classes of land uh, as uh, basically to bring under their own control. So they can designate whole neighbourhoods, for example, and bring them under the control of the minister, no longer under the control of Housing New Zealand. And I think that that is potentially going to have a significant impact on the overall provision of housing all throughout New Zealand. Whole communities who, who don't see this coming may well find themselves the subject to this. And I definitely think uh, that the minister should be very clear about the level of transparency that will be required. Uh, and the transparency should also extend to the effect on the value of the Housing New Zealand Corporation. So if you look at 2A7, for example, when we're talking about the money uh, and where the money is payable to, money that previously would have been payable into the housing account will now be payable into the Crown account. There's no getting around that. That's, that's what that clause actually says. So what... It's clear as day, and anyone can read it. And so therefore, what will the overall effect on the value of the housing corporation's value be? Uh, is this going to result effectively in a write-down of the value of the housing corporation? And will the government be absolutely transparent with the people of New Zealand about what that means? Bearing in mind that this was the government that went to the last election promising New Zealanders that there would be no more asset sales. That was clear as day. John Key said it, anyone can find the records to, 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 uh, to check them on that. And so is this simply another way of getting around that promise? Because if they're massively writing down the value of the Housing Corporation of New Zealand by transferring stuff out of it, that is an asset sale or an asset giveaway uh, by another name. So I look forward to the Minister's assurances that there will be full transparency around all of the deals that are done under this uh, clause. Because if there aren't, then that simply leaves the government open to a whole host of other challenges 
uh, around inappropriateness, around whether and, and, and a whole lot of other things which I can't uh, mention in the House without getting into more trouble. Mr.